I'm Edward Warfield. I'm the publisher of City Biz, and I'm honored today to introduce Todd Scott, who's the founder of We Rise. Welcome, Todd. Thank you for having me, Ed, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you. Can you provide an introduction to We Rise? Yes, We Rise uh, is a nonprofit that started with a group of youth uh, that wanted to understand more about um, housing and real estate and development of the housing. And from that, we were able to also start having educational classes and structured programming. Uh, and then from that, it catapulted into uh, being able to have other different types of entities that wanted to get involved in the understanding and the mentoring uh, of the youth in Baltimore. So there are really two pieces of it. There's the mentoring and there's the, the, the renovation, right? That is correct. And there's two elements to it. That's correct. And so you have a project, the Broadway East Project. Uh, can you tell us about that and the, the different phases that are planned for that? Sure. Yes. The the part of uh, that we're working on is in Broadway East, we started with a half a block of houses. And from that, what we wanted to do was as more and more youth wanted to get involved and learn more about it. We started working on one house at a time. And as we did that, we gave the youth an opportunity to understand all the different components of housing. It's not just construction, but it's also construction administration, how to schedule, how to bid for houses. And then most importantly, what I wanted each of the youth to understand and understanding now is ownership. Purchase the house, understand the ownership of how important that is to be able to create wealth and pass the wealth on for generations to come. And let's talk a bit about some of your key community and corporate partnerships, especially uh, the Department of Juvenile Services. Yes, that, that is something that really uh, excited me when I had opportunity through my job uh, to work and partner with um, Secretary Sam Abed. I met him in a meeting and I told him years ago, four or five years ago, that I would one day would like to connect with him and his youth uh, that come through the Department of Juvenile Services and, and mentor them. And that happened maybe four or five years ago when we had that meeting. Two years ago, we started having these discussions again, and he wanted me to meet with his deputy secretaries to start working on probably one phase or one program with the Department of Juvenile Services. I did that and I started with the Early Reporting Center program. And these are youths that are that have had a charge or got involved in a in the system uh, with getting uh, having a problem through the court system. And the court system allows them the opportunity to reduce their sentence like a probation by attending Department of Juvenile Services programs where they have structured programming uh, at one of their centers uh, on Woodburn Avenue. And I was uh, fortunate enough to have We Rise participate in that. So I go there once a week, speak to the youth and also the same process that I have over on Federal Street in Broadway East, be able to explain to them how important it is to understand ownership and to build your business. And I do it through the same way, through the houses. They, it caught on well. Uh, some of the youth, even though they satisfy their requirement with the Department of Juvenile Services, they wanted to stay on board and they wanted to stay engaged. So that really excited me. It also excited the Department of Juvenile Services. So from that, it just started really catching on. And now we have even more programs, uh, not just the Early Reporting Center program, which is ERC, but there's some other programs also at the Department of Juvenile Services that we're now able to build even more capacity with We Rise and teach more youth, not just young men, but now young women as well that are going through that system at Department of Juvenile Services. And obviously, as you and I chatted earlier about your background, can you, it's sort of, your, your bike, what you're doing today obviously is, is based on your background. So can you tell us about your, your childhood 
uh, attending Morgan State and then heading on to J.P. Morgan. So can you yeah, walk us through your, your life and uh, your career and how you got here? Sure, sure, Ed. I'll say one thing, I, 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 and I told you this before, and I mean this. I pinch myself a lot because I'm so fortunate, very fortunate that I am in the position I'm, I am right now. I, I grew up, I was born in East Baltimore in Latrobe Homes Housing Project, public housing. I was six. My father was raising me, was 28. He was shot and killed at 28. Left myself, my mom, and my brother who was four years older than me. My brother had to wear several hats at that time immediately. So he's 10 years old. I'm six. Uh, as he got a little bit older in his teenage years, he had to you know, take care of me, help my mom out with bills, work. Uh, he did everything he had to do to keep me from getting in trouble. Uh, with that, I was able to just continue down the path I was continuing down, which was just staying out of trouble. Uh, got into a little trouble, but not nothing major. Stayed out of trouble. Probably what, what changed my life more than anything is that my mother saw something in me that I did not see. She had the audacity to walk over to Morgan State University and tell them to give me a chance to go to school. I had no idea. She was doing this, already had me a job lined up coming out of high school at Northern High School, which is now Reginald Lewis High School. So I was I was OK. College was never on my radar at all. Uh, my grades in high school and middle school reflected that college was not on my radar. For some reason, <laughs> Morgan State told my mother, sure, let him come over here on a Monday. This was a Friday. She came home. She told me, go over to Morgan State on Monday and sign up for some classes. I, I, I don't know what she was thinking, but I do know that she saw something in me that I did not see in myself. I walked on that campus and saw people from different parts of the country talking about positive things, talking about their future, what they wanted to do when they finished college, where they wanted to go, where they, where they were going to live. And this was all new conversation for me. I immediately started getting involved, getting active, started participating. And then from there, people, again, saw things in me that I did not see in me. They picked me for leadership positions in a fraternity, leadership positions in student government, which I didn't see. So I, my life just constantly changed. Uh, and then um, I got on a couple of job interviews while I was still in um, college and landed a job while I was in college and had got recruited to work up in New York on Wall Street at J.P. Morgan. So I go from East Baltimore to Morgan State to J.P. Morgan. And it was just, things were happening so fast. And I always said to myself, my mother made this happen. My mother did this. If I can ever be in a position where I can speak life into youth, I will do it. Because there's so many kids, youth, that remind me of how I was. All they need is someone to give them some type of motivation and speaking to them. So that's what brought me back years later to Baltimore to do what I'm doing right now. So your mother had a master plan. She had a master plan, not a master's degree, but a master plan. And it's amazing because the things that, the things that I'm doing in the cycle the, the process, the timeline of how we rise work, mentor, teach, get build communities, take people out of public housing and out of low incomes and put them in position where they own. 
And that's what happened in my life. So I want to be able to give that back and teach that. So you presently are Deputy Director of Business Development and Strategic Partnerships at the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Tell us about your responsibilities there and how they tie into what you're doing. Yes, thank you. Yeah, my, my position at the Department of Housing, uh, again, it's just been a fantastic role that I have working on a tremendous administration. Uh, Secretary Holt, the, the day I came to work for Department of Housing at the state of Maryland, was the secretary. Uh, I, I've never in my entire professional career, and I really mean this, worked with a person more smart, relentless, caring, and selfless as the secretary. Because what he did was put me in a position to make me be able to use the skill set that I have to work well within the organization at the State Maryland Department of Housing. And also, when I leave that job at the end of the day, I'm able to go back in my community and he loves to hear about it. And he loves to be able to even have me several times speak to the department at some of the all staff meetings about We Rise. So it really excites me. And my role at the Department of Housing, um, I focus in on being able to discuss the different various products that we have at the State of Maryland Department of Housing, such as the Neighborhood Business Works Loan Program, such as our Neighborhood Revitalization Loan uh, Grant Program, uh, as well as our Energy Program and several of our uh, tax credit programs for multifamily affordable housing. So I do this through presentations to developers, to municipalities uh, on a constant basis to be able to discuss, describe and bring in more people and show more people of all the different things that we do to help develop more business uh, opportunities for uh, State of Maryland Department of Housing to use our programs in the state of Maryland. So let's go back to 80,000 feet. Uh, let's talk about Baltimore. What do you think are the critical elements of building a better Baltimore? I believe that the critical elements are um, you have to focus in on one and two or three areas at a time. When you start looking at trying to uh, take this entire city and, 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 and create some type of magic wand to, to make it all happen better, uh, you can't do that. I, I, I use sports analogies sometimes, um, but in this particular case, you have to get some first downs. Uh, you can't go for uh, a touchdown, a Hail Mary. You have to get first downs. First downs could be you get two or three communities and you say, here's what we're going to do. And you speak to your community associations, you elected officials in those areas, and then you have a plan and then you start with several blocks. And then from those blocks, you build out. You replicate that process in different parts of the city, but you have to start it in one part and you can't have it happen everywhere. One of the areas, several areas, one is you have to have, in my opinion, uh, you have to have opportunities for youth to be able to see that there is a future. They have to be able to see positive things in this city. Uh, a good example is one of the youth who lives in Edison Village. He was... Um, Never been down to, he told me through the connections, uh, through elected officials who've helped me uh, be able to make even more connections and have resources. He told me he wanted to get involved in hospitality. Um, so one of these uh, elected officials, Senator Hayes, came to me and said, well, Todd, let's let him come down to uh, and meet with one, uh, the general manager at the Sagamore Pendry. The, the youth went down there. We all went with him. He never been to Fells Point. He never comes across within his small radius of, of the area he lives in, in, in Edmondson Village. So it was new to him. And seeing the look on his face when he had a chance to sit down with the staff at the Pendry and with Senator Hayes, and for them to talk to him about being positive and doing positive things and opportunities, it just changed his whole mindset. 
And here's the is a great part about it. He he had a, a he, they made him sit at the head of the table. He sat there. He had crab cakes. He just couldn't believe it. And each and every person that was in that executive dining room for that event spoke life into him. He walked out of there feeling like a brand new person. I just received a, a phone call from him two days ago. He called me. He said, guess where I'm at? I said, where? I said, I'm taking my grandmother. I have my grandmother and my aunt with me. We're at the Pendry Hotel. It's their first time there. And it was his first time there. And see, that's the fulfillment I get. A person who've never been exposed. We have to be able to expose our youth to positive opportunities. It changes their life. So I and so that's what I want to see. You you change their lives by doing that. And while you're doing that, you have to have a plan for our youth to be able to see that when you own owning a house, if you want to be a barber, own the building. Ownership changes your life. But you have to start at this at the at the level that they are. Middle school. Speak life into them. Give them resources and connect them. And that's what we, we Rise is doing. And let's talk a little bit about you know, how the project's been funded to date. Uh, I know you have a GoFundMe campaign. You know, tell us tell us where you are in terms of raising money and uh, where you're headed. Yeah, well, we're excited to know that we just received our designation um, from the IRS that we're an official 501c3. That took... Uh, Almost a year long process, but but we're here now. So we're, we're, we're grateful, we're thankful uh, for all the volunteers that have worked so hard in the program, uh, all the staffing that obviously that we needed to get to this point. But now we're able to branch out and receive and ask for donations from foundations, uh, from municipalities, also from just the average person, uh, as well as some some corporate donations as well. So we're able to, we're going to have opportunities that we'll put it on our website where people can come in and um, go through the process of being able to fund. But right now, to this point, it's all have been just out of pocket. It's just been, I, this is something I really want to do. This is something I, I, I light up and get excited about. So I don't feel like if uh, when I spend money to, to take the youth out, when I spend money uh, as I'm going through the process with the houses, building the houses up, and that's my money and it's a, it's a loan and I'm the guarantor on the loan. So it hasn't been any subsidy whatsoever into what I'm doing in the building of these houses right now and showing the youth how to go through the process. It, it's been all on me. Uh, but I knew when I first started this journey that it would come back and I would get through this process and get to this point. So I'm so excited that we now officially have our 501c3 status with the IRS. Where is We Rise in a couple of years in terms of, like, if you really think about it, there are really two parts of it, obviously the people that you're, the kids that you're mentoring and the real estate. And so, yeah, give me a vision of where, where we, you know, give me a, a vision of the mentoring and give me a vision of the real estate. <laughs> sure. On the mentoring side, that that I see us getting well over to a hundred um, mentees in the year 20, 2022. That's going to be done because of the different um, phone calls we're receiving and feedback we're getting from different agencies and different entities and groups that want to be a part of it. So that's that's taking <laughs> that is definitely happening as we speak. Uh, and the development piece, I, I see We Rise having opportunities for acquiring more housing, as well as on a commercial side, being able to have incubator spaces set up so we can set up a paid apprenticeship workforce opportunity for our, for our youth. I don't want youth coming and learning without getting paid. So that's what we're working on. And that's why I see We Rise going because I, I listen to our youth. I, when I go over to juvenile services and, uh, and speak to the youth about um, what we're doing and how we can be more beneficial to them, 
they speak and I, and I have their ear and I listen to them and they tell me things that I realize this generation needs. We got to meet them where they are. And I'm so excited that they open up to me and tell me. So meet them where they are is we have to say, OK, let's 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 do things that where we can instantly put money in their pockets, but give them an incentive. You give them an incentive, say, on the back end, if you come to this, you know, five weeks at a time, this is going to be what you receive and pay. And you're going to learn. And we show them how to set up a business. And and a great partnership, another one I didn't mention earlier, is with M&T Bank. They have been on board uh, and they teach financial literacy to the youth in the program, which is great, helping them understand needs versus wants, go through an entire structured financial literacy program. They need that at this early age. Well, Todd, I want to thank you for sharing your story. It is a compelling story. And not only a compelling, in the rear view mirror, it's compelling and you've got a compelling vision because, yeah, I think mentoring and role models and real estate, you put everything together. It's, it's, hopefully it will be a, uh, we look forward to your continued success and please keep us apprised as you keep uh, changing Baltimore. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate it. Have a great day.